Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. Today we celebrate the Mass for the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our processional this morning, the Lord strong and mighty. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This weekend, the church celebrates uh, the week of Christian unity. And so whenever we come together in Jesus' name to praise him, we join with not only Roman Catholics around the world, but all those who love and profess Jesus as their Savior. And as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we take a moment and we call to mind our sins. You came to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You now sit at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
our young people please come forward for children's liturgy? And loving God, as these young people go forth to reflect upon your holy word, may it take root deeply in their hearts, and may they know how much God loves them. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Thing we have seminarians here. <laughs> Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with our all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility, perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst, a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel, they shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pastor and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. The Lord keeps faith forever secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets captives free. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. fatherless and the widow the Lord sustains but the way of the wicked he thwarts the Lord shall reign forever your God O Zion through all generations Alleluia from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. 
And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being might boast before the Lord. I'm sorry, before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they when they are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, we hear one of the more famous teachings of Jesus, and that, of course, is the Beatitudes. Um, as I was getting ready for today, I was thinking about another liturgy that we celebrate in the course of the year that uses the same gospel, and that's All Saints Day. If we want a job description of the saints, all we have to do is look at the Beatitudes. Because whether we're talking about the holiest of saints, people like Mother Teresa, or St. Francis of Assisi, or maybe someone we knew personally, when we think about their lives, we're thinking about the Beatitudes. You know, because they were poor in spirit. They were gentle. They thirsted for justice. They were willing to suffer for what is right. But the saints can teach us a lot about the Beatitudes, not simply by how well they live them, but I think also the saints can teach us something about the Beatitudes by how they themselves struggled to live them, and sometimes perhaps even failed to live them, because that's certainly the role of every saint struggles from time to time. You know, I know for myself, one of the ones I like to think of, especially when I'm tempted to not be nice. Do you, do you remember that? There's an expression, nasty nice. You know that? I didn't know that term until I came to North City. <laughs> but not because anyone was nasty nice, but, you know, but people were using that term. And it's like, okay. That's, and, and some of the saints were nasty nice. And the one that I would, would most focus on is St. Jerome. You know, our older folks here who grew up with the old mass, you probably know the Vulgate. Remember that old Bible, um, the one pre-Vatican II? That was the one that was translated into Latin by St. Jerome in the 5th century. He was a, a biblical scholar. Uh, he tried to be holy, but he could also be very, really not even nasty nice, just nasty. You know, when somebody disagreed with him, he would go on letter-writing campaigns, you know, like the 5th century version of social media. And he, he would attack their character. And he would go on, he wouldn't give up. 
They'd be doing it over and over. There's one friend that they had a falling out over a theological point. Jerome kept writing about him, horrible things. And finally, this guy stops responding. He just sort of rose above it. Even after the guy died, St. Jerome wrote an open letter saying, at last the scorpion is dead. He said that another friend had lost his mind from sewage water on the brain. And even with other saints, he got into a, a long, rather long disagreement with St. Augustine, you know, because St. Augustine wrote to him, Jerome wrote back, and somehow, because the mail system, letters got crossed and there was a misunderstanding, and Jerome started attacking Augustine publicly. And when Augustine found out about it, he, he, he wanted to be on Jerome's good side, so finally he wrote to him and said, all I'm asking, Jerome, is to sit at your feet and learn from the wisdom of the master. And at that point, Jerome decided Augustine was probably okay. But, <laughs> but he struggled his whole life to be patient, but he knew it. And he said he never failed to throw himself at the feet of Jesus and bathe his feet with his own tears of sorrow for the way he would sometimes behave. Um, but it's good to know those things because I think a lot of us can relate. You know, we want to live the Beatitudes. We want to be meek and gentle and kind and to thirst for, for justice and righteousness. We want those things, but we struggle and it doesn't come easy to any of us. You know, I think that one of the ways that can help us you know, this past week I was reading a reflection by St. John Eudes, and he, it was a reflection on the Sacred Heart. But there was something that was so beautiful, I'd like to share it with you, because I think it can help us with the Beatitudes. So St. So, so John Eudes is writing about how we invite Jesus into our hearts. And that's an expression we know well. You know, sometimes there's some Protestant groups that the, their salvation is, I invited Jesus Christ into my heart. What do we mean when we say that? I invite Jesus into my heart. This is St. John Eudes' response. And I recommend this week, take a few minutes in silence, sometime this week, and reflect on this. His soul in my soul. His heart in my heart. His breath in my breath. His will in my will. That is how close we are to Jesus. His breath in our breath. His soul in our soul, in a very real way. Because when we receive Holy Eucharist, that's what's happening. His body is becoming part of our body. He is becoming part of us. And when we reflect on that level of unity with Jesus, it's harder to go against the Beatitudes. It's hard to imagine Christ's breath in our breath, and then to go on to say something unkind or disrespectful to another person, or to engage in gossip. It's hard to imagine Christ's soul in our soul and then choose evil or choose injustice. It's hard to imagine Christ's heart in our heart and then to choose hatred over love. You know, all of this really is an invitation to be poor in spirit, to mourn with those who mourn, to be meek of heart, and to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And as Christians, this isn't just an obligation. This is a privilege. We get to be that way. You know, when the world is inviting us to hatred, when the world is inviting us to prejudice or to violence, our, we get to respond, I reject that, I'm not going to be that way. You know, because I get to follow Jesus and his Beatitudes by seeking to be one with him. You know, the Beatitudes help us very much as individuals. They also help us as community because we're called to live the Beatitudes, not just individually. We are called to live them together as the body of Christ. It's never just me and God. It's all about how we live together. And so that might also be a good thing to reflect on. How do we live the Beatitudes communally? How do we live them as a church? You know, this coming October, the bishops are going to be gathering in Rome for the Synod on Synodality, you know, where they talk about how can we better listen to the people of God in discerning God's will. You know, and I think this whole idea of how do we live Christ in the world today is going to be part of that synod on synodality. You know, but we live the Beatitudes communally. And I think we're going to see what a struggle that can be sometimes in the upcoming months with all things new. You know, and I'll admit, I was in a meeting this past week, not here at the parish, you know, but somebody I felt tried to pull a fast one. And I can tell you, the Beatitudes went right out the window. <laughs> you know, it got resolved. But I struggled very much in that, in that moment. How do we live them? We shouldn't get too worried if we find them difficult to live some days. Because when Christ taught the Beatitudes, he knew what he was doing. He knew he was presenting something 
that is a high ideal that's difficult to live. He knew he, who he was speaking to directly. He knew that Peter would struggle with courage. He knew that Thomas would struggle with doubt. He knew that Simon the Zealot, and the Zealots were dedicated to overthrowing the Romans. He knew that Simon the Zealot would struggle with being a peacemaker. He knew that the church founded on the apostles would struggle. But Jesus never would have given us the Beatitudes if he didn't believe that we can live them. Because we can. And every single day we stand at the crossroads and we start all over again every day. And we ask ourselves, in this moment, today, throughout this day, will I be humble or not? Will I be merciful or not? Will I stand for justice or not? And with the grace of God, we can do it individually and we can do it communally. You know, because we are not alone. Christ is with us. Christ is within each one of us to the point of his breath and our breath, his soul and our soul. And he's within our gathered community. And that's what we acknowledge as we celebrate Eucharist. Christ is at the center of this community. And when we finish up today and we go back out into the world to start the next week, Christ goes with us. Amen. And we know that he's going to be at the very center of all that we say and do. <laughs> Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And trusting that Christ is at the center of our community, we join with him in offering up our prayers and our petitions to God. For the church, that as we work for Christian unity with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we find, I'm sorry, we can find creative ways to collaborate in carrying out the mission of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord for our nation, that we may pass gun legislation to reduce gun violence, and for the victims of the multiple mass shootings in this past week. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the parish of North City, that we may work together to ensure a vibrant Catholic presence and outreach to our neighbors. I'm sorry, our neighborhoods. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for families in crisis and for those caring for members with serious illnesses, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may experience the fruits of Christian unity for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause to call to mind the intentions we carry in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray for all of our sick parishioners, and one in particular I went and saw at Barnes last night, and she's asked for the community's prayers, is Barbara Williams. And so for her and for all those who've asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of the Beatitudes, the gift of following you in the footsteps of the saints. Help us always to be faithful to your teachings and all that we say and do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. With your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, which will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at his command, we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to me bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You please be seated for a moment. He's got a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, tonight there is an ecumenical prayer service because this is the week of Christian unity. And so tonight, Archbishop Rosansky will preside over a prayer service with faith leaders from many different denominations. Um, I went last year. I think I'm going to go tonight as well. It's just really a beautiful thing. It's at 7 p.m. tonight at St. John Bosco Parish. I believe it's in the bulletin, but I also made up a flyer for the back table, so you can find it there. Uh, that's tonight, 7 p.m., St. John Bosco. Also, a Mass for Racial Unity is going to be presided over by Archbishop Rosansky. He's going to have a busy week. Um, this is over on Thursday, February 2nd at 7 p.m. That's St. Catherine Labore Church. And the St. Augustine Choir is going to sing. So Thursday, February 2nd, 7 p.m. at St. Catherine Labore. Um, also, the new Word Among Us are over there since we switched partway through this coming week. So if you use Word Among Us for your daily prayer, please feel free to take the February edition. Um, right after Mass today, there's a parish council meeting over here in the conference room. And then just, you know, we'll, we'll keep announcing it for a while, our stewardship committee. Uh, but the National Black Catholic Congress, uh, remember, you have a very short time to sign up for the... Um, early bird special. So go to our website. You can follow the link and in the instructions um, to sign up for both to let the Archdiocese know you want to take the bus, but then also to follow the link to actually sign up for the Congress, which will be this coming July. Uh, do we have any visitors today? No? Okay. Well, please stand and have a wonderful week. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. A recessional who is like the Lord. Keep this promise.